Hey guys, I've always been fascinated with what would happen if two Earth governments from different sci-fi shows would go against each other. Today we'll be comparing the United Earth from Star Trek and the Earth Alliance from Babylon 5 to see which one would win in a war. We'll first be comparing the main ships that'll be used in the war. At the end of the video, we'll be comparing two scenarios. The first scenario is between United Earth and the Earth Alliance to find out which one of these governments would win. The second scenario is between United Earth and the Earth Alliance again, but we'll also be including their allies to find out how that would play out. Let's start comparing United Earth main ships. The first ship is the NX class. The NX class is the strongest United Earth ship that they have. During the war against the Earth Alliance, United Earth only had two of these ships built. They were called the Enterprise and the Columbia. The NX class ship has a max speed of warp 5.2. The ship contains 83 crew members. It was armed with three phaser cannons and six torpedo launchers. The ship could also be retrofitted to fit more weapons. For defense, they have polarized hull plating and deflector shields. The second ship they'll be used in the war is called the Intrepid class, which is a light cruiser. It has a max speed of warp 3.5. It contains a crew of 46. It's armed with phaser cannons and photonic torpedo launchers. It's defended by polarized hull plating and deflector shields. The third main ship they'll be used in the war is called the Ganges class. The Ganges class is the oldest design ship that the United Earth has. It has a max speed of warp 3. It contains a crew of 30. It's armed with phaser cannons and it's defended by polarized hull plating. Now let's compare the three main ships that the Earth Alliance will be using. The first ship is called Omega Class Destroyer. It has jump capability. The ship can fit up to 250 to 1000 people. It's armed with 4 plasma pulse cannons, 6 laser batteries, 12 pulse cannons, and the ship is defended by armored hull and interceptors. The second ship is called the Hyperion Class. It has jump capability. It has a crew of 250. It's armed with 4 plasma pulse cannons, 2 phaser particle cannons, 4 pulse discharge cannons, and 2 thermonuclear turbo tubes, and it's also defended by a armored hull and interceptors. The third and last ship is called the Nova Class Dreadnought. It has jump capability, has a crew up to 250, and it's armed with 18 twin cannons, and is also defended by armored hull and interceptors. Now since we know the different main ships will be used in the war, let's find out how big is their navy. After doing a little research about the United Earth Fleet, I found out that there was not a lot of information out there. I was able to find a rough estimate of the amount of ships they have. United Earth has two NX class ships. There's between 50 to 100 Intrepid class ships, which is a light cruiser. The Ganges class ship has the most amount of ships in the fleet since it's the oldest active ship in the United Earth. It has most likely around 150 to 100 ships. Any other United Earth ships that are in active duty during this time most likely has less than 100 ships. The Vulcans were not wrong to tell United Earth that they were not ready to present themselves to the galaxy. United Earth did not have the same military might compared to other alien races in the Star Trek universe. The Earth Alliance fleet is a lot bigger than United Earth. They spent decades and decades growing their fleet to compete with other alien worlds. The Earth Alliance has a total of up to 50,000 ships built for combat. There's 21,000 Hyperion class ships. There's an average of 2,000 Omega class destroyers. There's an average of 2,000 Nova class dreadnoughts. There's a leftover of 25,000 other ships, but also includes smaller vessels as well. In the first scenario, the Q transported the Earth Alliance to the Star Trek universe and placed the Earth Alliance on the top right hand side above the Earth Alliance territory exactly where the Romulan Empire is located. Completely unaware what happened, the United Earth comes across a group of United Earth ships. In fear and confusion, the Earth Alliance attacks and destroys the ships. This angered United Earth and forced them to declare a war on the Earth Alliance. At the beginning of the war, United Earth realized even though that their ships were way more advanced than the Earth Alliance ship, they did not have enough ships to stop them from invading their space. So this left them with one choice, which is hit and run tactics. The main goal was to prolong the war long enough to force the Earth Alliance to agree to end the war. A year into the war, the Earth Alliance realized they did not have the stomach or the resources to fight any longer, so they planned out one final attack. The final attack was to invade United Earth's homeworld. During the attack, United Earth threw everything they had to stop the Earth Alliance, but they did not have enough ships to stop them. To save their homeworld, United Earth surrendered. After the surrender of the United Earth, the Earth Alliance helped rebuild United Earth to help symbolize for everlasting peace between the two governments. The newly found French Empire after the war would give both of the two governments more power to influence other alien worlds. In the last scenario, the Q transported the Earth Alliance to the Star Trek universe, but this time the Vulcans came to the aid of United Earth to help push back the Earth Alliance. A couple of months into the war, the Earth Alliance realized they could not fight a two-front war. In desperation, they started to look for allies. The Earth Alliance allied themselves with the Andorians, knowing that the Andorians hated the Vulcans and were waiting to fight them. With the help of the Andorians, the Earth Alliance was able to push back the Vulcans and the United Earth past their borders. A year later, the Vulcans were not happy with the way the war was going. It did not look like the war was going to end anytime soon. 
the Vulcans were able to convince United Earth, the Endorians, and the Earthlings to meet and start peace talks. They were able to come up with a fair treaty which would bring stability to the region. The treaty was braced with joy from both sides. Decades later, the Earth Alliance will join the newly found United Federation. I'm sorry that I was not able to use any videos, but CBS and other network companies are very strict to how other people use their content. If I got any of the information wrong, I would love to see the corrections in the comment box below. I'm not completely confident that the information I got about the size of the two government fleets is correct, but I know for a fact that the Earth Alliance has way more ships than the United Earth. I'm very curious to find out from you guys which Earth government you guys would think would win the war and why. And if you guys enjoyed watching this video, I would appreciate if you guys liked and subscribed. And if you guys did not like this video, I appreciate any feedback. If you guys want to watch a video about which Baba 5 captain is the best, please select the video on the right. Hope to see you guys next time on Utopian Broadcast. Thank you.